Let's take a walk through the code in this LabVIEW project. We'll begin by reviewing the overall structure. I've opened up the home security system application example that's based on the queued message handler model, or QMH. And I'm looking at the various message handling loops. Each one of these has its own queue, and each queue is created with a named reference, and each one of these names is unique. That makes it possible to refer to a queue in another process loop by name instead of by wire. The air handler is a little bit special. It uses an array of all of the queue references uh, bundled together. But again, most queue references are in fact by name instead of by wire. And so the large majority of the connections inside this VI are not visible by wires. The queued message handler design pattern has a number of standard process loops. The first is the system manager. It maintains the high level system state of the application. It issues commands to the task loops and receives alerts from those loops. The command parser interacts with the remote desktop PC. It accepts connection requests from the PC through the network, receives messages from the PC, and then enqueues those messages as system commands. Most often those would be commands to the system manager, but they can also go directly to any one of the process loops. Air messages generated anywhere within the application are enqueued to the air handler. It responds by sending the shutdown message to all process loops, although in production, it could log the air and then continue running. Here we can see where the air queue has been created and its reference is then propagated to all of the other process loops. The manual stop button is pulled in this loop and when clicked, it sends an error into the error queue and this causes the VI to shut down. Now let's take a look at the details of the two VIs that are available for sending messages from one process loop to another. We'll begin with NQ single message. The VI accepts a string in this form. It has the queue name slash and then the message, usually the state. The match pattern function splits the string at the forward slash into the queue name and then the state. This function accepts the name of the queue and then creates a new reference to that existing queue. It's important that it not create a new one at this point. This reference is used by NQ element and then this temporary queue reference is released. Only the queue reference is released, not the queue itself. The input air cluster is wired to the selector of the case structure. So nothing happens if there's an incoming error. The enable input, which defaults to true, determines whether or not the message is in fact enqueued. The NQ multiple messages VI is very similar in operation. This one, however, accepts an array of strings. They follow the same form of queue name slash message. And then inside the for loop, it individually invokes the NQ single message VI. The air cluster is wired to the conditional stop terminal. And you can get that by right clicking on the frame and choosing conditional terminal. This way the loop will stop if an error is encountered. The nested case structure technique for standard error behavior and the enable input is just like the previous VI. Now let's take a closer look at the states in the command parser. We'll open up the kernel which defines the behavior for this queued state machine. And we'll begin with wait for connection. It's based on the create network stream reader endpoint function. This uses a value for the timeout in milliseconds, which is established when the data highway is initialized, and then also the number of elements in the buffer. No error on the output error cluster means that the connection has been requested and established. And based on that information, the connected state is enqueued. And then the network stream reader endpoint 
is saved to the data highway and the PC host connected uh, Boolean variable is set to true as well. An error message means that no connection was requested within the timeout limit and then we enqueue the wait for connection state again. Once the connection has been established, we read messages from the PC remote host and pass those off to the rest of the process loops. If this function times out, then there is no message and we remain in the connected state. If timed out is false, then it means a message was received. First, check to see if the message is disconnect. If it is not, then we enqueue the received message as a command message. That's again the one that has the queue name slash state. And then re-enqueue the connected state. Otherwise, enqueue the disconnect state. So in disconnect, we use the destroy stream endpoint function and then enqueue the wait for connection state again. We empty the reader endpoint and then set the PC host connected Boolean variable to false. All right, let's finish up by looking at the queued state machine for the air handler. The air handler has the usual standard states, initialize, shutdown, and error, and then run is the main state here. When the air handler queue has an error that is dequeued and inserted into the data highway, and then due to this error, we use a for loop to loop through all of the queue references for the entire set of, of queued state machines and send a shutdown message to each one of those.